nose is back in the back. Boy, she's really settling on in. Oh, had kind of a short hunt this morning. Saw very happy with what I saw today. Oh, ended up seeing deer was kind of moving fast sometimes, and I didn't get all the get them all on camera. I ended up seeing four little bucks, a couple of really good promising bucks. Just real happy. This what we're gonna do on this place over in Mississippi. It's gonna come together, and y'all gonna be part of it. Y'all gonna get to see a lot, mostly all of it. But oh, anyway, I know I'm gonna be busy this afternoon. Oh, got some stuff I gotta go do with the family. My way to track supply now i gotta get some stuff but uh had such a good response on my last uh, history lesson video i guess is what it would be when i had when i was doing a little cooking and was uh in the brown house talking about the pictures there i'm gonna have to dig up some pictures i've got I've got photo albums stacked up from years of deer hunting, and I need to dig them out, and from time to time, I'm gonna throw a picture up there. So, I'll have to mark them in a way I don't do it twice, but I think y'all would like that. Uh-oh, let me catch this, I'll be right back. All right, y'all, been on the phone for a little while, I'm back. Oh, can't remember exactly where I was, but anyway, had such a good response on the uh, last video I did, like with the history lesson. All right, I remember where I'm at. Oh, just kind of tell y'all how my history goes with hunting. I always hunted with my dad since, I don't know, three, four, five years old. Back then, we was hunting out of wooden ladder stands, five gallon buckets for, for your seat. I remember when we got fancy, we'd take a tuba forward, make a shooting reel out of it, covered with camouflage material. And boy, I sat on, I would, Daddy would sit on the bucket, and I would sit in the, he, I would sit on the floor of the stand and put my feet on the last rung of the ladder. And boy, I got to see a lot of shooting and a lot of deer back then like that. We had some stands that was, well, they sure wasn't OSHA approved cotton spindles and up in the fork of a tree and all kind of stuff. Never heard of a safety harness back then. Oh boy, hunted some rough places like that. I remember when we got our first three-wheeler, it was a 185S and I can remember man, daddy or whoever killing deer and I remember going through water and I was a little, be so cold They'd leave me sitting on the three-wheeler. Daddy'd get off and be waist deep in water. Three-wheeler would be floating and just he'd float us till we got to more dry ground and crank it back up. We'd go again and probably get in a big old doe or spike or something out. So, boy, it'd come a, come a long way from where we used to be, but we've been working on it. Like I said, I'm 45 years old. This has been in the works. Kind of since I was, uh, it's the first piece of property we had. I was about seven years old, but some of this other stuff went on at a club that actually joins the property where I live. So it's a lot of a lot of history to that. Uh, honey with daddy. Every chance I got, and a lot of times daddy would go in the mornings and come, especially on them cold, nasty days when we was that little and come back and get us. And we'd go on the afternoon hunt. I hunted with daddy like that for a long time because Brian was five years older than me, so he hunted with a, he was, when I kind of got old enough to go with daddy, he was already hunting with a gun. And then, the first time I ever got to hunt with a gun, I hunted by myself own stand. I was in a shooting house. By then we had some shooting houses. I was 10 years old. Oh, I missed the first two or three. Oh, remember the first deer I killed. Oh, I was 10 and this, this particular place that joined us, daddy could only carry one guest. So that particular
particular morning, and whoever whoever didn't get to go as a guest went over on the other place that we had just got had a very short period of time and uh, I was 10 years old things are a little different I guess Cody can do a lot of this but at 10 years old daddy turned me loose on the three wheeler with a rifle and I rode several miles from the other place to this place on the three wheeler got my own shooting house and, but anyway y'all the first deer I killed was on Christmas Day, whatever year that had been, when I was seven years old. It was a spike. And uh, some of these places, like that place then, I filmed hunting in that same exact field now. My second deer I killed was uh, an eight point one morning, come chasing the doe. I'll never forget that first year I killed three and missed missed several, killed a big nine point on another piece of property that year that was, uh, he was big, I'll never forget it, he weighed 205 pounds, got him mounted, you know, and <coughs> that was the biggest deer, actually, that deer I killed, that first year I hunted was the biggest deer in our family, had killed, pretty proud of that, and then from then on, it was kind of on, you know, and Shortly after that, well, we always hunted, you know, we got to hunt Saturdays, Sunday afternoons, and holidays, and Brian got his license, to see, I got my license when I was 15, they had changed it after that, but Brian got his license, he was 15, we had an old truck that was retired from the roof, and it broke down on us just about as much as it stayed running gas gauge didn't work. We run out of gas all the time on the highway. It's crazy. But uh, that was our hunting truck. And uh, we had a little piece of property then that we don't have anymore. I guess it was on, probably the only piece of property that he ever sold. And that's kind of where we really cut our teeth is really getting after it and hunting. And it was some hard hunting. A lot of walking. Uh, boy, we we hunted and killed some deer. Killed a lot of deer. Killed some good deer over there. But I was, I've always been hooked on it. Killed a lot of deer. Uh, back then, the rule in Alabama was a buck a day. So, I mean, if you just say, bow season opened up, usually opened up around the 15th of October and gun season went on to the 31st of January. I mean, you could legally kill a buck a day and when I was hunting, I was trying to. There were several days you you killed, liable to kill two or three. Not that that was necessarily right, but that's what we did. Pretty much back then, if it broke the skin, we shot it. Uh, started at an early age, probably 13, 14. Uh, hunted in a lot of shooting houses. first two or three years by the time I was I, I guess by the time I was 13 or 14 I'd hunted with daddy so much in the back in the woods and these thickets and ladder stands and trees up in the fork and I ended up getting a climber I remember my mama who was at Walmart I don't remember if I got it for Christmas or what but I got, I got an old Amaker 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 whatever you call it climber stand I was probably 13 14 years old then and boy it was on then but I started hunting way back deep hard walking mile or two in oh uh, just back in some thickets I figured out at an early age hunting with my dad that you get back in these thickets and you kill bigger deer normally better deer and I just liked it I liked hunting back in the woods I liked walking back in there and that kind of started me oh uh, hunting these bigger deer not that I wasn't shooting I mean I was killing some deer that you didn't need to be shooting miles back in there spikes and stuff but it sure taught me a lot oh uh, that rocked on for <clears throat> I guess the first deer, I'll never forget, Brian may not want me to tell
tell this story, but I'll never forget. I was 14. I guess I was, I may have been younger than that. I may have been 11 or 12. Brian was driving, but on the first piece of property got, we got down there where uh, we thinned on them sawtooths, Daddy had, uh, and y'all see me hunting down there a lot now, still love it, still one of my favorite places in the world. Uh, Daddy saw a full point. He said, I want to let this deer go. This was our first start of management. Uh, the one other place we had that we uh, sold, we never did really manage that. That was our place to go shoot. And there, where I lived down at the house, that was where we started managing. Anyway, Daddy had seen this four point. Of course, you didn't see just a ton of stuff back then, so it was kind of easy to recognize, but... I had saw him one day, pretty long way away. And I, back then, I didn't have no binoculars. I just knew he had horns. I could see it through my scope. And I got down and stalked that deer, probably 13, 14 years old. Cold, by to freeze death, didn't have clothes, wasn't flipped back then. And uh, snuck up on him, and I saw it was that full point. So I had to let him go as a, as a 13, 14 year old kid. I wasn't mad, but I sure wanted to shoot him. But anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and tell this story on Brian. He, uh, it was either the next morning or a morning later. If you looked at this, it was one of them four points that went straight up and forth. If you're looking straight at you, it looked like a spike. <laughs> well, Brian messed up and shot that deer. He'll probably, I know he'll watch this video, but, uh, just part of it. Uh, he shot the uh, shot the four point, and of course back then I was a little upset because I had done all that work and stalked up on that deer that day, about to freeze to death, and I let him go, and then my older brother shot him. That was our first deer that we ever let go, and it kind of went on from there. I was we was very blessed to have another place to. Uh, to go hunt where we could learn. I mean, my first deer I killed, I reckon the, it must have been 11 when I killed my first deer with a bow. It was the next, I was thinking it was 10. It must have been 11. But I also killed my first uh, deer with a bow over on that little place. 11 years old, 12, whatever it was. Oh, so we was very fortunate and blessed to be able to uh, have that spot to go learn and shoot not really mattering what it was and then we kind of everybody's kind of you kind of got to grow into this management thing if you're going to do it and, and do it the way we do it i still like to have a spot for cody when cody likes to go we're going to drop the hammer with him he'll have to really grow into that stuff too and that's uh that's fine and dandy but as time went on we got to really letting a lot of deer go. At, at first, we would let a lot of deer go, and the, the rules would be just a little different as we all bow hunted. Uh, as y'all know, if you bow hunt, it, it's pretty hard to get one in there close sometimes. So, so uh, the bow hunting rules were a little bit different than the gun hunting rules. You can get away with shooting a little smaller deer. And then as time went on, kind of got into the coal bucks, and, and down there at the house where I lived for years, we had a lot of bucks that just had, it would be like an eight or a 10 point on one side and a spike on the other, and we shot and shot and shot. And you don't see that just a whole lot anymore. Uh, so I think it was definitely a genetic deal. I think we got them pretty much out of there. And trying to just kind of think back as we went. We killed a lot of deer, killed a lot of bucks. It was years before I ever shot a doe. I might shoot one on the bow or something, but back then you had doe days and then it'd turn into a, a doe week. And then later on, as we really got into the management, it was, uh, and it may be that way now, I don't look at the laws that much, but it would get to where you could shoot a doe a day, you know, and I can remember it was really when the deer population really got there and we were really managing our buck to doe ratio and all. 
I can remember shooting 20 or 30 does myself a year, and you talking about getting old, boy. But it really, really made a difference. We, we're kind of working on a few different things now. Oh, uh, we, we've decided uh, the more food we've got there, the more deer we can let go as far as does and all. So things have really changed and developed a lot over the years. Uh, a lot of the stuff I see now that not tooting our horn or anything, but a lot of stuff I see now that my college may put out, Mississippi State or Auburn or something. It's, it's stuff we've done for years. And I guess it was by accident. Maybe not by accident, just by spending so much time with it. I mean, I was, I, you talk to a lot of people, oh, like the piece of property we got down there where I live, since I was seven years old, there's not been, not a lot of people that's spent basically their whole life on one piece of property and watched it and seen it so the, the piece of property i was hunting this morning we're we're really gonna try to go to the next level with it what we're gonna do pretty much now for for a few years until we see a problem a genetic problem or something or too many deer or something we're basically gonna shoot five-year-old plus deer regardless no matter if it's a spike or a 20 point we're not gonna shoot anything till they're five years old I mean, we're just gonna and then it as time goes on if we start seeing a certain genetic trait well we'll start taking that deer out at an earlier age but pretty much a always been in the woods i mean it was i coon hunted for i used to competition coon hunt when i was 13 14 years old did a lot of that i always liked the dogs never deer hunted with dogs very much uh just wasn't my cup of tea i like i like sitting in the woods there for several years in high school i never picked a rifle up unless i had to go shoot some does or something i was pretty much bow only I still love to bow hunt. Uh, I'll get a little lazy sometime on these cold days and go sit in the shooting house and just watch. I'm, I'm, I'm all about trying to get somewhere. I know it's maybe not the best way to kill a big buck, but I'm, I like going and sitting somewhere where I can see and kind of see what's going on and see how many deer you got and this and that. We have always been doing it. I mean, it's been years and years and years, and it pays off. And the biggest thing is it's, a, it's about a year-round project just to kind of keep up with them and, and take care of them, keep your timber right. Um, these feeders, you know, we all seen me put out a lot of these feeders. This is kind of our <coughs> place over in the Mississippi. It's, about, it's the first year it's ever been done. I've been playing with it for several years at the house. And, it's been illegal forever but it's legal now and not that people haven't been doing it for years but that was something i think that helped me is i never really fooled with the corn and i really learned how to hunt and learned how to kill big deer without the corn uh, no telling what we could have killed over the years if we did that we just we just never did it uh, i need to dig out some of them pictures and then through some of these hunting videos throw some of these pictures in there. I think y'all enjoy that. I like looking back at them. It's kind of got me wanting to, to uh, look back at them. Brian has dug up a few he had. I got albums of them things. I used to keep a record. I had a book probably till I was up out of high school, early 20s maybe. I kept a record of everything I saw every day of the season that I hunted and everything I killed and I was pretty interested with it. Things have changed. There's no doubt, I really believe, there's bigger deer nowadays than it was then. Of course, it's due to letting a bunch of them go and seriously managing and keeping the feed to them and taking care of them. And they gotta get old. That's the main thing, to get a big deer. He ain't gonna, he gotta get some age on it. Maybe I won't ramble around and talk about this history lesson again. I'll have to remember, but I knew it was going to be a short hunt this morning. Uh, like I said, I got some stuff to do this evening. And was 
wanting to like to do a video every day and I don't like them real short ones and like I said we had such good response on the last history one uh, a lot of people appreciate it and uh, so appreciate y'all watching them and commenting and when y'all comment it kind of gives me an idea so another video to do if I'm necessarily not doing something worth video that day or whatever just a little history lesson we might do a little history lesson on turkey hunting or something we we'll better wait till turkey season to do that but I am uh, pulling into tractor supply I gotta run in here real quick and get some stuff and then I might be back with y'all and show y'all what we went shopping for all right so I made it through my tractor supply trip what I had to get we've got those little buddy portable heaters in just about all the shooting houses I've tried to we've tried we've tried to stock stock them things over the years to where kind of all you got to do when you go is uh, carry a bottle of gas but I wanted to try something even a little more portable I don't know if y'all can see that one but that's one of them that's just got a head on top of it that you screw the little bottle on I think the little thing will fit in my backpack and if you if you get in a mess get wet in a bad spot can't get to a heater don't have a heater or whatever oh i just kind of wanted to try one of them I, I don't know if they're as adjustable as the other ones but i think there'll be a time and a place for it i believe it would be a lot more portable especially if you're just gonna go sit on the ground you got cold you could fire that thing up and like i said my hands and all don't circulate quite as much as they used to so uh kind of it's kind of another thing that's changed over the years i tell you i can remember i was just thinking i can remember back pete you better sit down i can remember back seven eight nine years old i'd be hunting with daddy and like i said we didn't have the clothes near the clothes like we got now and like i could get cody and plus you just that little you're gonna get cold i can remember being way back in the woods with daddy and just get cold just nearly be would be crying sometimes just freezing to death and i'd get down and walk way out back to the truck seven eight years old and crank the truck and warm up and daddy just be out when he came out and it's just if we'd have one of these we killed a lot of deer back then if i'd have one of these little heaters back then and some clothes i got now I don't know what we've done. We would have wore them out. But that was my trip to Tractor Supply. I'm going to start stocking up on these little bottles of gas. Just kind of another lazy way or smarter way to hunt, whatever you want to call it. I, I like the cold weather, but if I can sit there and kind of turn that heater on and off and kind of keep warm and not have to have so many clothes on, why not? So, got us another little heater back there to try plus some gas to kind of stock up and be ready for that anyway i am about to call it a day on this video got some things like i said that i gotta do a little history lesson a little bit of deer hunting a little bit of tractor supply shopping if y'all like our stuff subscribe to us hollis farms hats t-shirts and stickers hollisfarms.com appreciate y'all watching